okay if the video is not straight and it's like leaning a little this way it's because my tripod refuses to be straight right now it's just throwing a fit so um i know it's a little early to hear from me again but i was bored and this topic's kind of just been on my mind especially in the day and age that we live in so i thought we could just talk about it real quick not real quick this video is going to be at least 30 minutes long um but i want to talk about what the bible says about marriage um because i'm a christian and so i must uphold those values if i'm going to claim the title and the lifestyle of a christian right right okay so <clears throat> For the most part, this time I decided just to read straight off the Bible Gateway because um, I referred to it a lot to break down the text for myself when I was just studying this in my personal time. So I don't really think it's necessary to read it uh, twice, like from my Bible and then offline when it's the same thing, just broken down more easily. So we're just going to read straight from the website. And first we're going to read 1 Corinthians 6, 12-20. And that's titled, um, Use Your Body for God's Glory. So I'll read it. And, um, I guess all you can do is listen. <laughs> so thank you for watching. And let's just, like I said, let's just start. Okay? Alright. Uh, so verse 12 says, I'm allowed to do anything you say. I think this is, before we start and go any farther, this is someone who has written a letter to someone else because they say, that like not I said this but directly from God a few times so I'm allowed to do anything you say my answer to this is that not all things are good even if it is true that I'm allowed to do anything I will not let anything control me like a slave someone else says food is for the stomach and the stomach for food yes and God will destroy them both but the body is not for sexual sin the body is for the Lord and the Lord is for the body and God will raise our bodies from death with the same power he used to raise the Lord Jesus Surely you know that your bodies are parts of Christ himself, so I must never take what is part of Christ and join it to a prostitute. <laughs> okay, so that just means like, even if you can do something, it doesn't mean you should. Like, you can snort drugs, that doesn't mean you should. Just because your body allows you to doesn't mean you should and that's why it says um you wouldn't take something that christ has made his own and try to put it with something of the world because um things that are of the world and things that are of the lord just they can't go together because they just have different end goals in mind so that was verse 15 verse 16 says the scriptures say the two people will become one, so you should know that anyone who is joined with a prostitute becomes one in her body. But anyone who is joined with the Lord is one with him in the spirit. So run away, okay, verse 18. So run away from sexual sin and involves the body in a way that no other sin does. So if you commit sexual sin, you are sinning against your own body. Wait, okay. I like how this part was phrased more in my Bible. It sounds like someone keeps like opening my door and then letting it hit against the frame like Anyways, uh, so verse 18 through 20, I'm going to read from here. I just kind of like how it's worded better. It says, flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So on here, on the website, it says the same thing. That um, sexual sin is the only sin that defiles you. Like, like okay, in verse 19, where it says, you should know that your body is the temple for the Holy Spirit that you receive from God. So if Jesus lives within me, which he does, then I shouldn't be taking things that aren't his and weren't dedicated for me from God and trying to also put them in my body. I hope that makes sense. Oh, it just moved my tripod. Just kidding. 
sorry. So, notes for that one I put, uh, we do have control over our bodies, but if we claim to be Christians, there are obviously some things in and of the world that we should have no interest in partaking in. So like drugs, um, alcohol, premarital sex, things to that like, like uh, swearing, stealing, murdering, cheating, you know? Okay, so. And then the next one for this specific passage says, we are the body of Christ. So anything that we do to defile our bodies, in this case, sex before marriage, is also defiling Jesus. Since his spirit lives within us and God since he created us. So, okay. Since we are the body of Christ, that doesn't mean that I am a direct manifestation of Jesus. It means that his spirit lives within me and even though I go to church, when I'm not at church, when I'm not at church I am the church. That's just what that means. Alright, so next is going to be pertaining to the same thing. Uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 1 through 16. Go ahead and highlight that. It just makes it easier to know where I should stop. Okay. 1 through 16 says, Now I will discuss the things you wrote me about. You asked if it is better for a man to not have any sexual relations at all, but sexual sin is a danger, so each man should enjoy his own wife, and each woman should enjoy her husband. So this person that wrote to him said that it's better for a man not to have any sexual relations. So like, I guess they're asking why would you get married if you never intend on having sex? Uh, I'm probably gonna get, well I'm not that big, Never mind. I don't worry about it. Um, why would you get married if you're not going to be intimate with your spouse and they said uh, in verse 2 but sexual sin is a danger so each man should enjoy his own wife and each woman should enjoy her own husband the husband should give his wife what she deserves as his wife and the wife should give her husband what he deserves as her husband the wife does not have power over her own body her husband has the power over her body and the husband does not have power over his own body his wife has the power over his body don't refuse to give your bodies to each other, but you might both agree to stay away from sex for a while so that you can give your time to prayer, then come together again so that Satan will not be able to tempt you in your weakness. I say this only to give you permission to be separated for a time. It is not a rule. <clears throat> I wish everyone could be like me, but God has given each person a different ability. He makes some able to live one way, others to live a different way. Now for those who are not married, and for the widows I say this, it is good for you to marry. I just like skipped the whole line, hold on. Verse 8, now for those who are not married, and for the widows I say this, it is good for you to stay single like me, verse 9, but if you cannot control your body, then you should marry. It is better to marry than to burn with sexual desire. Okay, so up here in verse 7 where he said, he makes some able to live one way, others to live a different way. That, that just means that um, some people can stay single and control themselves to not have direct actions be, because of sexual urges, and some people can't. And the people that can't should get married to the person that they want to, is experiment the right word? The person they want to experiment with because Marriage is not marriage. Sex is not just a toy that is used and thrown away. It's something uh, like sacred. It's something binding. It's something intimate that God has blessed us with as a gift to glorify Him by creating children to be raised up in His Word. So, in verse 10, it says, Now I have a command for those who are married. Actually, it is not for me, so the person who is writing this, it is what the Lord commanded. A wife should not leave her husband, but if a wife does leave, she should remain single or get back together with her husband, and a husband should not divorce his wife. The advice I have for others is from me. 
The Lord did not give us any teaching about this. If you have a wife who is not a believer, you should not divorce her if she will continue to live with you. And if you have a husband who is not a believer, you should not divorce him if he will continue to live with you. The husband who is not a believer is set apart for God through his believing wife. And the wife who is not a believer is set apart for God through her believing husband. If this were not true, your children would be unfit for God's use, but now they are set apart for him. But if the husband or wife who is not a believer decides to leave, let them leave. When this happens, the brother or sister in Christ is set free. God chose you to have a life of peace. Wives, maybe you will save your husband. And husbands, maybe you will save your wife. You don't know what will happen later. Okay, that's pretty self-explanatory. But just in case it wasn't, I'm going to go over it again. So, uh, up here where I know is going to raise some question where it says... Is this the same shirt I was wearing in the last video? It probably is. I love this shirt. It's got a stain on here. I don't know what this is. It just won't come out. I think it's like whiteboard marker or paint. No, it's acrylic paint. Yeah, it's acrylic paint. Just pretend it's not there. Okay, I'll sit where you can't see it. There we go. Much better. Okay, back to the notes. I don't know why I just realized that I had to say it, but... Okay, so up here where it says... Uh, in verses like 3 through 5 where it says women don't have control over their bodies and neither do men that's not saying like women are slave to their husbands and that men are what's the word going around online? simp? I have no idea what that means but it doesn't mean that men are less of a man because they submit to their wives it just means that um, so what I wrote here is Women have control over husbands, and husbands have control over their wives, but not in a, like, slave master way. In a consenting submission, which is what the Bible calls women to do in a marriage. Marriage is a mutual agreement to be respectful and give attention and affection where it's due. So you wouldn't get married to someone if you planned on never talking to them, if you planned on never spending time with them, if you planned on not having, like, mutual interests. Why would you get married to someone you hate? <clears throat> now that makes no sense to me. And then the latter part of the scripture. I don't know why my camera just cut off at 12 minutes. I'm sorry. But like I was saying. Um, back up in the latter part of the scripture. Where it says if you have an unsaved spouse. Um, who's willing to stay with you. Let them. If, you're going, if they are going to leave. Also let them leave. It won't be the fault of the believing spouse. But if they do leave and become tempted with intimate desires, they should go back to the spouse they left or be single and do not go to a stranger instead of their spouse. Mm, hopefully you know what that means. Um, you know what, my channel's not big enough that I'll get restricted by YouTube, so I'm just going to say if your spouse leaves you because you suddenly become a Christian and you have different desires and morals, then um, if they're going to leave, let them leave. It's not your fault. If they're willing to stay, let them stay, because you don't know when or where or how God might use you to save them. And even here it says that your spouse is sanctified through you believing. So, um, if your spouse does leave and they become tempted, they should come back to you, or they should just stay single and just deal with it. They shouldn't take those desires out on a stranger when they're still married, even though you're estranged nose is starting the itching again so <clears throat> that's it for that next passage we're going to go to is Matthew chapter 19 and it says Jesus teaches about divorce okay so I'm going to read uh, verse 1 through 11 12 1 through 12 I don't know why on here it says 1 through 9 all right I changed it 1 through 12 so after Jesus said all these things, he left Galilee. He went into the area of Judea and on the other side of the Jordan River. Many people followed him. Jesus healed the sick people there. Some Pharisees came to Jesus. They tried to make him say something wrong. They asked him, is it right for a man to, to divorce his wife for any reason he chooses? And Jesus answered, surely you have read this in the scriptures. When God made the world, he made people male and female. And God said, that is why a man will leave his father and mother to be joined to his wife. 
and two people will become one, so they are no longer two but one. God has joined them together, so no one should separate them. The Pharisees asked, Then why did Moses give a command allowing a man to divorce his wife by writing a certificate of divorce? Jesus answered, Moses allowed you to divorce your wife because you refused to accept God's teaching, but divorce was not allowed in the beginning. I tell you that whoever divorces his wife, except for the problem of sexual sin, and marries another woman is guilty of adultery. The followers said to Jesus, to Jesus, If that is the only reason a man can divorce his wife, is it better not to marry? He answered, This statement is true for some, but not for everyone, only for those who have been given this gift. There are different reasons why some men don't marry. Some were born without the ability to produce children. Others were made that way later in life. And others have been... <laughs> This light is like making it hard to read. Uh, and others have given up marriage because of God's kingdom. This is for anyone who is able to accept it. I feel like some of this doesn't need explaining, uh, but I wrote notes anyways. So, um, like they were just trying to get Jesus to say something that would contradict the laws that God had already sent, which he wasn't going to do. Uh, so in my notes I wrote, men leave their mother's house to marry their wife and together they become a unit under God, a couple who always places God first and everything they do will thrive. God promised to bless married couples who heed his word and wait for him to speak before they take matters into their own hands. And now we come to divorce. Um, the Bible clearly says that no man should divorce his wife and vice versa unless one of them commits adultery. So if someone gets married and then divorces that person to move on to a new one just because the newness wore off of the last person in the eyes of god that's adultery because you're just hopping from one person to the next to fulfill some sexual desire that you probably could have fulfilled with the partner you already have so if you're going to just be doing that you might want to not get married to the first person that comes along take time to consider who you're marrying because People can be one way before marriage and completely flip character after you're married and you're stuck. So, all right, the last one we have, the last little passage is 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 through 11. And that says, um, this is talking about the end time, and it says a warning about false teachers. And the Spirit clearly says that in the last time, some will turn away from what we believe. They will obey spirits that tell lies, and they will follow the teachings of demons. Those teachings come through people who tell lies and trick others, so, um, hypocrites. These evil people cannot see what is right and what is wrong. It is like their conscience has been destroyed with a hot iron. They say that it is wrong to marry, and they say that there are some foods that people must not eat, like meat, which is what my next video is going to be about if I can find, what I'm pretty sure I can, more biblical evidence to back it up. So, but God made these foods, and those who believe and who understand the truth can eat them with thanks. Everything that God made is good. Nothing he made should be refused if it is accepted with him to thanks. Everything he created is made holy by what he has said and by prayer. And then this says, uh, be a good servant of Christ Jesus. Tell this to the brothers and sisters there. that will. This will show that you are a good servant of Jesus Christ. You will show that you are made strong by the words of faith and good teachings you have followed. People tell silly stories that don't agree with God's truth. Don't follow what these stories teach, but teach yourselves to be devoted to God. Training your body helps you in some ways, but devotion to God helps you in every way. It brings you blessings in this life and in the future life too. Here is a true statement that should be accepted without question. We hope in the living God, the Savior of all people. In particular, he is the savior of all those who believe in him. This is why we work and struggle. Command and teach these things. Okay, well, let's go back to that. This is why we work and struggle. Um, God never promised life would be easy and we struggle because that is testing our faith in him to believe no matter what that whatever life throws at us, God will always have our back and he is not going to leave us when things get hard because he's in control of everything. And... He just He's just not going to leave. And if he did, that would be completely contradicting what he said, which is that he would never leave. So he can't. Not that he even wants to. Okay. 
So verse 11 says, command and teach these things. You are young, but, but don't let anyone treat you as if you are not important. Be an example to show the believers how they should live. Show them by what you say, by the way you live, by your love, by your faith, and by your pure life. Okay, so for First Timothy, I wrote pretty much what the, the same thing the scripture said, which is in the end times people will refuse to get married. Um, command to abstain from food that has been blessed by God for consumption, which like I said is meat um, and dairy, dairy products, which is what my next video is going to be about. I don't know why I had to write that in my notes. I know what my video is going to be about. Um, they will turn to lies and hypocrisy as well as demons and false doctrine, doctrines to try and fill the God-shaped void in their lives. Okay, so my summary ended up being not a summary ended up being another little advice so i wrote um in summary no sex before marriage just wait uh why would you not want the first person you give yourself away to to be the person that's committed to you through marriage like that doesn't make any sense to me um and yeah people cheat but it usually if you take a long time to consider the person you're dating for marriage you can kind of tell what kind of person they are by dating them. Um, usually people take a long time to consider if the person that they're dating is who they want to marry. I've been, like, people online have told me, so, like, on Instagram in the comments, that why get married if, it's like a bug in my room, why get married if 50% of marriages end in divorce? Um, Usually if you marry someone, you're committed to them, like marriage is a mutual commitment to each other, and no one goes into marriage with their end goal being divorce. If you are, please don't get married. Please don't. Save that person from the heartache of getting divorced. Um, just a few years ago, divorce rates were about 75%, and now they've lowered to about 50%, and that's not because less people are choosing to get divorced, it's because less people are choosing to get married in the first place and they're having kids and they're using their kids as the baseline of commitment to each other instead of marriage which is how you should start because it's a lot easier to leave someone if you only have a child together than it is to leave if you're married to them which is why you get married and then you have children that way there's already two forms of commitment in your relationship so um, if you guys have followed me on Instagram for any amount of time, you'd know that I really adore Ben Shapiro. Um, and according to him, and everyone with more than two brain cells, there are literally three things you have to do to make sure you don't end up in poverty. And they are graduate high school, don't have children before marriage, and keep a full-time job. And um, those are easy. So... Last but not least, I put, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit and should do everything in our power to honor God in all that we do. That's, okay, I've got two minutes for my phone's probably going to shut off again. Um, I'm trying to rush because there's like a lot, there's someone singing in the background that someone happens to be my dad. And I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but if you can, I hope you enjoyed it because he's a really good singer. So... Um, I'm sorry I rushed towards the end, but I hope you guys got the gist. Just uh, don't have sex before marriage, and don't divorce your wife or your husband unless they cheat. It's pretty simple, right? Alright, I'll see you in the next one. I just want to add really quickly, please, if you're going to watch my videos, please, 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 read the description. Because I put songs there that I like. I put information about, um, like, if it's a book review, I put information about the books. I put information about the Bible that I use, like a link to it. I put information about uh, Bible Gateway. Um, usually I put the scriptures there that I that I use because I know that I'm a scatterbrain and like nothing I say makes sense most of the time. So uh, just read the description, please. I'll try not to make it long. Alright, see you, now I'll really see you next time. Bye.